Yo, what's up, what's up, y'all? I'm back with another Virginia's Gangster Files. Yeah. And today's topic is going to be about Paul Taylor. Paul Taylor was a gangster straight out of the Bad News, Virginia. The bottom. You know, he, he resides on 20th and Wickham, you know. Down there in them times, this was like 1980, the end of 80s, and the beginning of the 1990s, because he got locked up in 94. He was 27 years old when he got locked up. So, let's get into this story about Paul Taylor. This is Street Smart Sarge. Let's go! The story takes place in the late... 80s and the early 90s. Uh, during that time was a cracker around that time, and a lot of people, you know, didn't have much. You know, so the ones that didn't have much, you know, you either played sports as a, you know, growing up, you either played sports or you sold drugs. And you can also, and then it was the other where you, you would rob the drug dealers so we call them them guys the jack boys so Paul Taylor was a jack boy that had a crew um Cleavon Cleon Avery William Blunton uh, Anthony Dunlap Damian Lamont Purden that was like them were, them were part them were guys that you know ran with them that was part of that crew you know and, you know, um, if you ever heard of Cleon Avery or William Blunton, they, well, they were locked up for the murder of Gabriel Cooper, an 18-year-old who was murdered at the Steamfitters Plumbers Union on War Boulevard. Now, those two ran with Paul Taylor. Paul Taylor also ran with Nathaniel Dunlap, Damian Lamont Burton, and some others. The crew would, you know, basically backdoor you to get money. You see what I'm saying? So, like, when it came down to certain, when it came down to it, what they do is they'll set you up, rob you. You know what I'm saying? Set you up. Uh, find out where you sat in your stash, double back, you know, hit your stash. You know, they were doing small stuff like that. And then they started doing it with the double back where you'll come score from, you'll come score, you'll come holler at me. And when I leave, like a few minutes, sometime later, like my people will pull up. They my people, but they, you don't know they my people. They'll pull up. And bam, hit you. Take you for everything you got. Jewelry, everything. Might take it what? You know what I'm saying? Wild, wild style. You know, but see, I couldn't live like that. Being a backdoor ex expertise on my hustle, no. I don't think so. You know what I'm saying? It's all about good business. And back then, you know, nobody wanted to really deal with that you know they wanted to get money because a lot of people was i can say a lot of people people around here was making money you know the best way they could they didn't have to backdoor people to do it it's just certain people could certain people could hustle and make money and certain people just couldn't make money they always spinning 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 they they don't want to read they don't want to make you know, money to sit on or money so that you don't have to always have to do what you always have to do, you know? So living that life, that seems like that's what you always have to look over your shoulder. You always have to remember, you know, where you was at, what you did, who you did it to. Cause you know, people got kids, man. People got family. You know, no, they might be, they might've been with you that, that day or well, with them that day, you know? So, that's just, you know, something to think about. But, you know, back to the story. 
Julius Jed. That's where I'm at in the story. Julius Jed was an individual that he had gotten to it with. Paul Taylor got into it with him at the Pepper Village that was on uh, Jefferson Avenue where he shot him in the knee. Now, Jed, Jed had died, my fault, wouldn't say anything. So, you know, he know how they roll. He didn't want them to, you know, to be shooting up his house or, you know, put his family in harm or his girlfriend in harm, him and his girlfriend in harm. So, he didn't say anything. And, you know, I guess, you know, I guess they wanted to intimidate him to make sure he wouldn't, to make sure he wouldn't say nothing. I guess they felt like they had to take him out. And one night, he was coming out of his house on Buxton Avenue, going to use the pay phone, because back then we didn't have cell phones. And, you know, you ain't really want to use your house phone, so you use the pay phone. So, you know, you get him out to use the pay phone. And when he went out there to use the pay phone, I guess that's when they seen him and they, they set up and they fired him. They started five, 15 shots. Eight of them hit Jed, Jed Adia, and his lungs, his liver, and his spleen, you know, fuck, it was messed up. R.I.P. Jed Adia. Um, you know, he passed away from his injuries. He couldn't, you know, it, it was hard, you know, on a body like when your body, when you get hit like that eight times, it's hard to, you know, it's hard for the human body to recover from that. But, you know, that's what happened. So the trial comes up for, for, um, Paul Taylor and Nathaniel Dunlap and Damian Purdy. And when the trial comes up, you know, Paul Taylor comes up with this story that he wasn't with him that night. That was his defense. He wasn't with him that night when they did what they did. He was up in Yorktown. He was over there in Yorktown. They were doing whatever, and they came up there to meet, to catch a ride for him to Richmond. And then they went to Richmond, where they got caught. That was his story. That was his defense. Even though it didn't make sense, he had um, he had the two guys. That's why I mentioned them, William Blunson and Cleon Avery, as witnesses. That he was not with them that night. That's crazy. So, <laughs> so he. Supposed to have them come down and testify on his behalf. You see what I'm saying? Not I don't, I don't believe he testified in, on their behalf because whatever it was, they were together. See what I'm saying? So he's saying that he got witnesses, and the witness was um, almost didn't show up. Like I said, they um, Blunton, he was uh, late. They, they didn't get him from Southampton where he was supposed to, and then they brought him up, and I guess he testified. But um, it, it really didn't work because they still end up putting him, you know, down for life. He still ended up getting caught for life. He wasn't getting around this one, you know. But it was time for him to lay it down. He did so much out here on the street terrorizing people I ain't gonna say terrorizing but you know shooting people running around here you know pulling being shysty backdooring people you know it's just going all run over it's a whole lot going on you know what I'm saying people people want their money <laughs> you want some money and people want their money so you know shootouts at the shootouts you know people just End up wanting to lock you up. They don't want you around no more. But, you know, that's how the story goes when you're a jack boy. This is Street Smart Sauce. Tap in. Subscribe. Love you. Peace. And I'm out.